Today we will talk about how do we use the concept of equivalent resistance to solve mine ventilation network. For example, if we have a, a serious um, circuit, so serious circuit looks like this. You have one airway, you have your second airway, and you have third airway. Well, they might be the same uh, size, they may not be the same size, and the length could be the same, or could be not the same. Airway one has a resistance of R1, and the quantity flowing in airway one is um, Q1. And in airway two, the resistance is R2, and the quantity is Q2. And in airway 3, the resistance is R3, and the quantity is Q3. So, this airway can be reduced to one equivalent airway. This can be reduced to one equivalent airway, looks like this. It has resistance of R equivalent, and the quantity flowing in this equivalent airway is Q. How do we calculate the resistance equivalence and the quantity flowing in this equivalent um, airway? The following equation applies. So the equivalent resistance equals to the sum of the resistance of each of these um, airways in a series. And the quantity Q equals to the individual Qs. And Q1 has to be equals to Q2, and Q2 has to be equal to Q3. So this is the relationship between the series circuit and the equivalent resistance. Let's look at one example. Say R1 equals to 22. R2 equals to 11, and R3 equals to 35. Now I ask you what is um, resistance of the equivalent airway? So what is equivalent airway? And what is pressure drop if Q1 equals to 5 cubic meter per second? Okay, I will erase this. We have some more space. Okay, apparently now we can solve the equivalent airway equals to 22 plus 11 plus 35 equals to 68 Newton second square divided by meter to the eighth. Now ask us to calculate the pressure drop in this um, set of serious airway. The pressure drop equals to pressure drop equals to R equivalent Q square. Now we will need to solve Q. Q equals to Q1 and they are all the same, Q2 equals to Q3, well, E equals to 5 cubic meter per second. Therefore, pressure drop equals to 68 by 5 square equals to 340 Pascal. Now let's look at how do we use the calculation of the equivalent resistance for solving airways in parallel. So as you can see here, there are three airways in parallel. One is on the top, that's the red airway, and one is green airway, and one is blue airway. Let's say the quantity come into the airway as a total is uh, Q. And uh, the resistance for the top airway is 
R1. And the quantity going to the top airway is Q1. Resistance for the middle airway is R2. Quantity going into the middle airway is Q2. And resistance in the below airway is R3. And the quantity is Q3. And now, how do we reduce this airway to a equivalent airway with um, resistance of the equivalent and um, Q. In this scenario, the total airflow goes to the three airway in parallel is going to be the same as the total airflow goes into the equivalent airway. So Q equals to Q. There's no change. But to calculate the equivalent resistance, we have this equation here. R equivalent equals to parenthesis square 1 divided by 1 divided by square root of R1 plus 1 divided by square root of R2 plus well, you may have more than three airways, but in this example, we only have three. But if you have more than three airways, you will put the terms here. All the way up to the nth airway. So this is your equivalent airway. So, okay, this is your resistance of the equivalent airway. How do we calculate uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3? Okay, uh, in this case, Q1 equals to Q square root of the resistance of the equivalent airway divided by resistance of um, this airway. So Q2, the same equals to the total Q by resistance of the equivalent airway divided by resistance of airway 2. And the same way Q3 equals to total Q, the resistance of the equivalent airway divided by R3. If we generalize this equation, we can find Qn. So Qn is the airflow in the nth airway equals to the total amount of air goes to or distributed to the set of the parallel airway multiplied by the resistance of the equivalent airway divided by the resistance of the airway of interest. Now let's look at one example say Q, so the total amount of air goes to the three airway in parallel is 100 cubic meter per second. And R1 equals to 10 Newton second square divided by meter to the eighth. R2 equals to 20 and R3 equals to 30. I will neglect the unit. They will have the same unit. Now, calculate the resistance of the equivalent airway. So R equivalent equals to, if you still recall the format of that equation, parentheses square 1 divided by 1 divided by square root of R1, that's 10, plus 1 divided by square root of R2, that's 20, plus 1 divided by square root of R3, that's 30. So if you do the calculation, the result is 1.92 Newton second square divided by meter to the eighth. One thing that you need to note a lot of times, even though the formula is provided to you, but don't forget this, there is a square outside the parenthesis. And don't forget it's one divided by the whole terms in below.
and um, down here it's one divided by square root of the resistance of each airway. Okay, uh, sometimes a student will neglect these um, little terms. Okay, now how do you calculate the airflow going to airway one? So Q1 equals to, according to that equation, the total Q by R equivalent divided by R1. So equals to 100 by 1.92 divided by 10. That's 43.8 cubic meter. Similarly, Q2 equals to 100 by 1.92 divided by 20 equals to 31 cubic meter. The same way, Q3 equals to 100 by 1.92 divided by 30 equals to 25.3 cubic meter. There is one other way you can use to calculate Q3. If Q3 is the last quantity that you need to calculate, there is one other way. Well, I haven't mentioned the direction of flow yet. So the direction of flow is like this, okay? Apparently, all the direction of the flow is going to be from left to right. So if Q3 is, is the last quantity you want to uh, calculate, you can use Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's first law says the sum of the quantities entering and leaving a junction must be equal to zero. In this case, we can use um, this junction. We can use this junction as the starting point. Entering the junction is positive and leaving the junction is negative. So Q is positive plus negative Q1 plus negative Q2 plus negative Q3 equal to zero. And uh, Q is known, which is 100. Uh, the minus Q1 is 43.8, minus Q2 is 31, minus Q3 equals to zero. Now you can solve Q3 as well. Q3 equals to 25.2 cubic meter per second. Well, this is uh, all cubic meter per second, cubic meter per second. So that's the flow rate, it's cubic meter per second. So in this video, we have talked about how do we use some equations to calculate the equivalent resistance if the airways are either in parallel or in series. So if the airways are parallel or in series, they can all be calculated or reduced to one equivalent airway that has a equivalent resistance and um, amount of air flowing in the airway. The same way as if the airways are in series, we can reduce it to one single airway that has a equivalent resistance and um, um, Q, amount of air flowing through the airway. Why it is important to know the equivalent resistance and the quantity of air flowing into it? Because it's very important that we know the pressure drop in that airway or in that series of um, airway, P equals to R Q square. So if we know the equivalent uh, resistance, we can calculate the pressure drop in that series of um, uh, airways. One other note is for the airways in series, the equivalent airway calculation equals to R1 plus R2 plus well, you may have more than three airways, but um, whatever uh, airways you have plus Rn. So the equivalent airway is the sum of the individual airways that are in series. All the flow quantities are all the same. So Q1 equals to Q2 equals to Q3 
uh, equals to equals to q n equals to q. All right, this is uh, for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.